Welcome to another episode of Tech DLDR. Today, in the space update, we have a lot going on. We're going to talk about the Raptor SN44 swaps from the Starship SN9. We're also going to be talking about things going on with Rocket Lab and NASA. So if you want to know more about that, be sure to stick through the whole episode. But let's get into the reason why you clicked on this video. So the Starship SN9 had to have two of its engines replaced. If you don't remember before, Starship underwent three static fires the other day. We didn't see any launch, and then all of a sudden Elon Musk had talked about how two of the engines needed to be swapped for whatever reason. He didn't really specify too much, just said there was damage. Now, we don't know what caused that damage. We don't know why, but we know that we're not going to see the SN9 launch probably this weekend because of these engine swaps. So this is yesterday coming from John Cross, a nice up club. Uh, up close photo of the SN44. Now that was yesterday. Today there are more news. Now this is coming from ZJ Rockets an hour ago. He was saying that both engines have already been removed as of right now. And that's so, so quick. For SpaceX to be working that quick, I love to see it. I love that it didn't take weeks because I know with the SN8, there were a lot of delays. So we're already seeing the engines being out and apparently both have already been replaced back in. I don't know how much testing they're going to have to do before they even do the static fire test. I don't know how long it's going to take to make sure these things are fully swapped. I don't think the engine swaps in a rocket like this are going to be that quick within a 24 hour span. I mean, swapping a car engine can take quite a while. So swapping engines on a spaceship Will probably be a little bit bigger of an endeavor. I'm just worried that by doing this swap, they may have opened a can of worms. They didn't anticipate some random thing here or there may have not been properly installed, something like that. That's my only worry with this. It's not so much the delay. If they need to take their time, they need to take their time. I'm just worried that something that they just didn't anticipate might go wrong because of that, and we might see a problem. Now, obviously, with the SN9, we want to see this do not only the, the launch, but also land upright without exploding. We don't want to see another SN8. Hopefully, we get to see the proper landing. And I hope if it, you know, if it does explode, hopefully it has nothing to do with the engine swap. It has nothing to do with a problem like that. SpaceX already said that they found the issues with the SN8, why it couldn't land. And they're going to implement those new solutions into the SN9. So with these engine swaps... I know they have great engineers on point. I know they have a great team at SpaceX. So I'm sure hoping that this whole swap goes smoothly and we don't have any RUDs on the SN9. We're definitely going to have to see a static fire again for the SN9. We'll probably see that sometime, depending on how quick they're working. I know, obviously, they're working really quick right now to get these swapped. There are really a lot of things that can delay this, though. I'm hoping... By the middle of this week, we might be able to see a static fire. We're definitely not going to see anything this weekend. If you had any hopes for this weekend, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. But by middle of next week, we could see a static fire. That is my hope right now. Now, if that's all you want to know about the whole engine swaps and things like that, that's all the info I really have at this point about that. Like I said, if I get any more updates, I'm going to be updating you guys. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also let me know in the comments what you think about this whole engine swap, about if you think anything might go wrong, any good sides, bad sides, this whole thing. I'm really curious to think or to know what you guys think about this. But if you want to know more about what's going on in the space realm, stick to the whole episode because I got a lot more coming. So Rocket Lab, if you don't know, depending on where you live, either early today or late last night, Rocket Lab was going to be launching a German satellite. Now, there's not too much info regarding this German satellite. Rocket Lab hasn't really unveiled much about it. I think it's kind of a hush-hush thing for the company they're doing it. For whatever reason, it's all understandable. However, they're not going to be doing their launch. Well, I should say they missed their launch for the fact that they were getting strange data coming from their sensors, and they didn't want to take the risk of flying this and having anything go wrong, especially with precious cargo on board where it's not going to be something like the SN flights where they're pretty much just testing the vehicle itself. This vehicle should be working fine. They're in the business of getting someone's product into orbit. The good thing about Rocket Lab and them delaying this, 
I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few days they have this all sorted out and they do go through with the launch. The good thing about it is they're based in, if you don't know, they're based in New Zealand. They launched from New Zealand. The benefit of this, what really makes them thrive essentially, is that there's no flights in New Zealand. Even when this whole, when the world wasn't crazy, there's not much flight overhead in New Zealand. That's a big problem for space flight is having to clear the air for these rockets to go into orbit. In New Zealand, they don't have that problem, especially if they're operating at the southern point of New Zealand. They don't have that problem. They don't have to worry about that. Something like this isn't a big deal for them. They already have plenty of time for clearance. So I'm not too worried about Rocket Lab. Really smart people down there. I'm sure within the next few days, this is all going to be sorted out. It's just something I want to let you guys know about because I find it really interesting. Rocket Lab, if you don't know, they operate primarily in small rockets. They only do small launches. I think it's really cool. And also the owner, uh, Peter Beck, he never even went to college. He founded this company. The guy never went to college. He came out of high school, was a tool maker, I believe, essentially a machinist, if you're not familiar with that, and started a company that puts stuff into orbit now. So I find that really inspiring personally. If there's any of you guys listening, it's just really cool to see someone with no formal like engineering or physics education, but was still able to form a company based on his passions and is now putting stuff into orbit, now has a successful company. Really cool. The other thing I want to talk about today is NASA is doing essentially a static fire for their SLS later today, apparently around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's good and bads about this. The good, it shows NASA wants to get back in the space game. They want to get back into Mars. I mean, NASA has for a while. They've never not wanted to. It's more or less government funding, I would say, is the problem. The problem with this is that it's from government funding. It, Boeing was the vendor for this ship. If you don't know, Boeing charges a lot of money for everything they do. Anything military contracted, government contracted is super expensive. That's what I don't like about this. My personal opinion with NASA's flight, now this is just my personal rant. Let me know in the comments what you think about this as well. But personally, I think NASA really shouldn't be focusing much on launches. I think they should be working more with SpaceX and Blue Origin in terms of getting stuff, having them get them to the moon, get them to Mars or you know anything like that. I think NASA's budget, though, more or less, shouldn't be going towards funding these types of rockets. I think it's probably better suited and more about the ground research and finding stuff, the information they just got from that cargo ship from the ISS, using the money to do that, using money in their telescope projects and their programs like that. The thing is, SpaceX and Blue Origin are going to soon be able to do this so much cheaper than NASA could ever, especially working with Boeing. I just, as much as I love to see NASA putting us on the moon again and getting people excited in the space game, it's just, I think the money would be better suited in other areas. Let the private companies do this stuff. Let the companies that have a good manufacturing in place, that have affordable manufacturing in place, that have all this research and the failures that lead to the successes, let them do that. NASA works with them to get what they want to where they want. That's personally, again, my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I'm curious. I know a lot of people are super excited about this, and I am excited to see, like I said, NASA back in it. But I also, I'm thinking more from the business and financial perspective of this whole situation. Anyway. That's all I have for you guys in this episode. If you want more updates on the SN projects and space in general, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I have more content coming out like this every day, if not every other day. Really, the whole thing right now with the SN projects is I don't want to report anything to you guys until I have concrete evidence in terms of what's going on, either from SpaceX and Elon Musk or from people who live in the area themselves. They're really the ones giving the best info because they have all the... I mean, they're right there in person. They can see the stuff that's going on, like I showed you before, the engine swaps. They're right there, so we don't have to wait for SpaceX or any official to give the announcement. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to smash the like button your way out to let me know that this is the content you guys want. Either way, have a good one.